Hey there, welcome to or welcome back to No Pants Profits. My name's Richard and I'm coming to you from the escalator, just leaving the Matt Franco show uh, at the Link Hotel. And I want to give you a bit of a review of the show after just getting out of it. You know, they, they say magic reinvented nightly. That is the tagline. And I kind of do agree with that tagline. Now, right now I'm seeing eight different magic shows in 72 hours because... I guess because I'm a crazy person. Um, I'm actually headed over to the Penn & Teller show next. I will tell you, out of the shows I've seen so far, this was the most advanced high-tech theater that I saw a show actually happen in. It's kind of a brand new theater just built for him. It's been around for eight years. Now, for those of you that don't know, Matt Franco was, a, uh, was the winner, the first magician to win America's Got Talent. Potentially the only magician, but who knows? I don't pay that much attention. The magicians who have won America's Got Talent. I will tell you the trick was the show was very sleight of hand heavy. Slight of, very sleight of hand heavy, very card trick heavy in the scheme of things. Um, very card trick heavy. It was about 70% card tricks. There's not really big illusions and that's one of the main reasons that like I didn't want to go see Shin Lim because I didn't think it would be a big show if that makes sense you know uh, a lot of stuff had to be coming up on a screen it was good it's sleight of hand now sleight of hand takes significantly more skill than say a furniture mover which is big illusions and stuff like that um also it is a completely clean show i want to be very clear the thing that was also very clear is just the the pure enthusiasm that matt, uh, matt franco i always like to say james franco the pure enthusiasm that Matt Franco actually had for what he was doing was really impressive. Uh, I've heard, I've not seen it yet, I'm going to see it tomorrow. I've heard that, you know, David Copperfield is just kind of going through the motions and not really doing anything. Like he's there, he's going through the motions. Matt, and Matt Franco was present, he was there, he was aware, he knew what was going on, everything like that. Um, and what's funny is, you know, they say that uh, good artists create and great artists steal. I think that's the the phrase, uh, you know, a lot of the tricks that he did were not created by him. They were created and stolen from other magicians. What do I mean by that? He did a trick where a balloon uh, was filled with helium, a balloon was filled with air, and they swapped. There's actually an entire section of the show that I was like, wait. He did a thing with balloons where the balloons were swapping, the helium and the air balloon swap, very similar to a trick that Penn and Teller used to do. Uh, I'm headed to Penn and Teller literally right now. Um, but uh, Penn and Teller used to do uh, with um, a camera and a bag full of helium. It was originally filled with air, then it would fill with helium. It's a take on that trick. It might be the same exact method. I'm not gonna talk about how that was done, but that was kind of a trick that came from somewhere else. And they played the Pixar music uh, from Up. So it was a very up, uh, up moment, per se. Um, but where was I going with this? Oh yeah, and then the next trick was like Monsters, Inc. It was like the doors that came down for Monsters, Inc. There were really no big illusions. Um, it is a much larger theater than some of the shows I've seen. I've seen Mac King today. I've also seen Banachek. It is not like Copperfield size. I don't think it's Penn and Teller size. That theater is probably at least a thousand people. So just so you know, it, it's, it's a populous theater, but the important thing is, you know, a lot of these newer acts come in. There's people like Penn and Teller, I'm going to see Copperfield, uh, Mac King, Banachek's been behind the scenes. He's just now coming in front of the scenes uh, the last few years uh, that have kind of been an institution forever. And Matt Franco's kind of doing something new. I'll be honest though, brutally honest. Uh, there were effects that happened uh, and they've been updated for millennials, but they're kind of older effects like instead of putting a dollar bill inside someone's wallet or inside of an envelope or something like that he had it inside a package of ramen but on the stage there was a prop that was a thousand packages of ramen and he let someone choose from those thousands of packages of ramen and then their signed hundred dollar bill was inside of a flavor packet i'm sorry if i'm destroying magic i'm not going to tell you how it's doing um and then there were a lot of callbacks i mean matt franco in the end of the day is a card magician uh he's a card magician so i mean he's gonna do card tricks he's gonna disguise card tricks as other things but realistically 
the guy's gonna do card tricks. Uh, so it was very card trick heavy. There were a couple uh, very interesting, uh, there was a disappearance, uh, which was actually done very, very well. Uh, I am a person that studies magic. I actually saw the disappearance coming a mile away. You just tell kind of when someone walks off the stage that doesn't look like they should be walking off the stage, it looks a little bit taller, a little bit shorter than they should have been. Well, that's when disappearances happen. Uh, but there was a lot of personality in the show. Um, I, I'll put it like this. I, I have not seen Piff yet during this trip, but I think of Matt and Franco as like a clean version of Piff that you can feel comfortable taking your kids to. He also seems like a real family man. Um, his wife, he, he's at the point that uh, he's at Caesars. He's, he works for Caesars Entertainment. He could get an assistant, but his wife is on stage with him every single night for the last 10 years he's been performing, uh, which is kind of cool. You, you don't generally see that a lot anymore. It's kind of kind of harkens back to the days of the Pendragons. If you know Jonathan Pendragon and his wife, um, yeah, it really does harken back to the days of the Pendragons. Um, since you've seen that. Now, she wasn't actively in any tricks. He didn't saw her in half or do anything like that. I'll be honest with you. This is probably a good show to see if you kind of wanted to see a mix of, like, Shin Lim and Penn and & Teller. You know, Penn & Teller are really not known for card tricks. Um, they're known for more unique illusions. Matt did his own version of the cups and balls. But it went along with a, a song and a story he was going to tell on America's Got Talent. Uh, fortunately, there was really nothing replaced from America's Got Talent. But yes, I, I'll be honest with you, there was a lot of inspiration in his show from Penn & Teller, which I actually really like. I'm going to see Penn & Teller right now. Like, literally, the show starts in 20 minutes, and it's going to take me 12 to get over there, so I'm going to have to stop this really soon. Uh, but, you know, a lot of the inspiration there was from Penn and Teller making a cell phone disappear, calling the cell phone instead of it being inside of a fish like Penn and Teller did it uh, in the past, you know, it was inside of one of the tables. It's, it's very cool, it's very hip, the theater's beautifully designed. I'll put it like this, if you have kids or if you don't like offensive language and crude conversations, he's your version of Piff the Magic Dragon to see. I personally still think Piff is probably better I haven't seen Piff this trip yet, so don't don't come at me, bro. But I think Piff is probably still better. But uh, yeah, he's kind of like a Piff, but cleaner. You can see the theater's kind of still emptying out. He doesn't do a uh, he doesn't do a meet and greet after like a lot of the other ones do. Um, yeah, you know. Let's just take a look real quick. We're gonna go up the escalator. Go go down the escalator. Uh, every other magician I've been to so far has been small enough that they do a meet and greet after. I want to kind of answer that question myself. Uh, we're going to go up the escalator. That's where the Matt Franco Theater is. There's Matt. I really do need to get in a taxi to go see Penn & Teller. But let's go up and let's go down. Again, here's what I think is important. I think the problem is a lot of these guys, Copperfield, Penn & Teller, uh, Banachek, who's been doing stuff behind the scenes forever, um, Matt King, they're getting old. And you need the next generation of magic. You need, you know, you really do need kind of a magic reinvented nightly thing. And I think there's a lot of refinement and things like that. Yeah, there is, there's no meet and greet. So that's where things kind of start to end. And I guess they kind of start to end there because the theater's so big. But I personally think, and I've not been in Penn and Teller's new theater. I mean, same theater, but new design of the theater. Uh, I've not seen Penn and Teller since they started doing Fool Us. But their old theater was not that high tech. So I want to see the new theater, which is also where I believe, I believe, where they shoot Fool Us. So Matt Franco, yeah, I do recommend it. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's a similar show honestly to piff and i think piffs is funnier piffs is dirtier but piff is not acceptable for children so matt franco as weird as it sounds it's kind of the cleaned up version of piff the magic dragon kind of reusing some old effects in new ways this is richard from no pants profits coming to you from the link hotel
with a review of Matt Franco, Magic Reinvented Nightly, reminding you that when you wear no pants, the only thing you got left to lose is your shirt.